No, it's gonna be cold. <laughs> <laughs> and this, they got the it best. This, they got turn it on. you're the yeah, best. For a little bit, not nah, T, just... you're the best. Do you know what you need to be? I really hope you become a movie star. I swear down, because this is the kind of busy stuff that movie stars do. I will become a movie star by next year. <laughs> by the grace of God. Amen. 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 All right, cool, cool, cool. Yes, 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 yes. Good evening, everyone, to the Goodman Audio Listening Experience, aka the Goodman Factory Podcast. It's your boy Goodman Daps here today with Goodman Demeji, Goodman Manny, Goodman T. Shout out to Goodman Malik on the camera on the ones and twos. Pew. You know the vibes. Um, so today, as you know, we always love to be able to speak on topics that are popular and those that aren't so commonly spoken about. Um, and today, we want to talk about the topic of being able to open up or rather the over-encompassing idea of opening up um i feel like for us as individuals as a whole it's very very um important to be able to do that but we can also acknowledge how there are certain factors for example that make it easy for one to open up or factors that make it very hard for one to open up and that depends on the whole you know array of different factors so obviously the four of us here today are ideally going to want to speak about that and you know just ideally be able to drop some gems and being a, being able to address that and so on and so forth so let's think of the first question to ask and obviously i'll put this out to the floor to the good men as a whole do you think you are able to open up don't be shy, boys. I can see all of you looking around all quickly. Like. To open up. <laughs> hmm. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's so vague. It's like, all right, can I'll, you okay. open up? All right, cool. Yes. All right, cool. Do you do you feel you? It is easy for you to open up um, about certain things. So it, it could be any particular thing, something work related, maybe emotional, mental, religious, whatever the case is. Would you say as a as a whole? Is it easy for you as an individual to be able to open up and communicate when you are opening up accordingly? Um, I think um, I can open up, but it depends on who I'm opening up to. Okay. I'm so used to not opening up that I, I feel like I don't need to, which I guess is unhealthy. But then I do have my release and people that I can open up to. So, And even with those, I wouldn't say it's easy, mm. but if I have to open up, then I know when to and who to go to to open up. Yeah, I hear that. I absolutely hear that. I guess it kind of stems back into one of the pr our prior episodes in terms of support circle and your group or something like that. So I yeah, hear that. So uh, I don't know if it's easy. E it's not easy because then that will, I feel like for it to be easy, it should come natural to you. Yeah, I hear that. If that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think I'm great at opening up at all. Mm. Um, okay. This is mad, you know. This is like the most stuck for word I've ever seen you, bro. Yeah, word. You're <laughs> usually quite yeah, expressive in that. I'm just celebrating. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's probably one of my like obvious flaws. I think mm. it's, it's certainly what my wife would say. Um, and it goes hand in hand with like communication as well. Um, wait, wait. So you communication is your flaw or opening up is your flaw. It's weird. You know what it's communication in terms of like from a professional point of view mm. is actually one of my strengths. Mm. Yeah. Um but opening up with like my family or with close friends, it's not something I do well. I don't mm. do it well I don't do it enough and I certainly don't do it well. Mm. Um and when I don't know, when I think about it in, in great detail, I link it back to just the experience I had growing up. Like mm. the relationship with my parents, for example, I never saw good example i don't think of my parents just communicating and opening up to each other it may be like a positive way mm. yeah um mm. and it's kind of like that with my siblings as well as, as as we've gotten older we've kind of learned to do that a lot better but i i learned to start opening up with my wife mm. because for her it's okay. like communication and opening up was key it's like key. if you've got an issue let's talk about it don't walk around the house don't walk around holding those feelings mm. or like having an opinion and not saying anything that's not going to help anybody but yeah. for me that's always my go-to yeah I, you know like i and i think because i always used to like um 
what's the word? I used to um I used to trust myself too much. I used to think mm. that you know if something's bothering me, I trust myself to be able to get over it. Yeah. Like I, like, may, like you know like maybe it's not too much of an issue. Maybe I'm just going to I'm just going to um keep it to myself and see if I can manage it, see if I can deal with it. Would you say you're a bit of an overthinker in that regard? 100%. And more often than not what would happen is uh I'm not able to to manage that situation or deal with that very well, mm. and it will build up and build up until there's a big blow up. Yeah, and that was the case with my family. Mm. That was the case with my wife, and so I, that's why I say, you know, for me, I think opening up isn't my my strength. It's something that I'm working on, and I guess if I was going to answer the question, you know, how am I able to do so, or why is it getting better? Because my wife encourages it mm. ultimately, you know, and I still think. That for someone like me, you know, like talking therapy, which is something I've only started exploring within the last like maybe nine months. Yeah. I think I would benefit from from therapy of uh, of some sort, you know. And I've said that to a few of my boys that there's so many things that we've gone through, it's never left my mouth, you know. Like I, I haven't spoken about it in public. Yeah. And and there's a lot of like you know deep, deep stuff that I think we've gone through as a, as a group of friends, and no one's really kind of spoken about it. So yes, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that um speaking up is something. Or, or opening up is something that I'm very good at. I don't think so. No. Is mm. that just with negative stuff, or are you able to open up, sort of when it's uh, you know, with how you feel mm. in a in a positive light? Yeah, if it's if it's positive, I can I can do it. Mm. Like I said, in a professional setting, my colleagues wouldn't say that to you at all. They'd say the opposite. It's like our oh, man, he can communicate with everybody. Mm. He can speak to parents. He's a good listener. He uh, you know, he he's able to kind of draw people in. But when it comes to that personal stuff. It's the opposite. Mm. I'm not. I'm not good at it at all. It's interesting that you mentioned that because um, you said that whole thing of at work, for example, you're able to kind of talk and communicate freely, and um, I feel like a big part of that, and I feel like a lot of people do that. I think to a degree, it's easier sometimes to be able to vent and offload stuff to people who you know don't have a deep place in your life because realistically, it's pretty much going to be between you and and it's not because here's the thing, right? Sometimes, like. When you have a thing of opening up, for example, mm. it's a case of you're opening up to someone ideally that you know and trust really well. And ideally, it's a case of either you're opening up to them so that either you can vent or so that you can get advice. But sometimes you don't want advice. Mm. Sometimes you just want to vent. Mm. You just want to highlight that, you know what, this issue is shit. And I just want to know that, you know, I've actually been able to speak it to someone. So like you said, in terms of telling someone at work it's a lot easier to tell someone at work who you know that really and truly will leave that office and not give a fuck about what you've told them <laughs> right yeah, as sure. opposed to actually you know yeah. going and speaking to family like your brother or your sister or your mom or dad or you know in, in your case you know your wife mm-hmm. um and you know uh, there's going to be potentially back and forth which yeah. can end up in arguments and well i me myself i know that I don't like arguing. I don't like conflict. I rather like just keep that stuff away from myself and keep it moving. Mm. Um, That's so interesting because I feel like where so many of us struggle with opening up, we've had that one experience where it's just a bad experience where yeah. we have opened up and we've been vulnerable, mm-hmm. and the person on the receiving end has been I I, I don't know dismissive, mm. and we're like I'm never doing this again. Yeah, you told me I can come to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's bait. It just takes <laughs> one. Bait. It just mm. takes one, especially when it comes to trust. Mm. Yeah, that trust is broken. It can scar you for life, and you will just revert and you'll do whatever feels safe for yourself. Mm. Yeah. So, so holding it in, you know what I mean, dealing like letting time be the healer or whatever. Too many times I've done that and it's ended in me um, exploding when like I've just had enough. Mm. What are you going to say, sir? I was going to say, sometimes it's not even like if trust is broken. Sometimes it's just how they made you feel when you opened up. Like, yeah. Like if you make someone, like, like if I've been made to feel small mm. or I've been told that I'm being too sensitive in that one moment mm. that I've decided to open up, you're Split. not going to hear from yeah. me again after that because it's just like one... I don't want to. I don't want to come across as a victim. This is just my own like mm. personal issue. Like, so I don't want to come across as a victim. I don't want to come across as someone that moans a lot. So these are all the factors that lead to why I wouldn't open up on a regular basis in the first place. So if I didn't do it, and then you say, "Oh, you're just being sensitive," or you're looking into it too much, you're overthinking it. Mm. I've only said it because it was something that I was really struggling with. I was, you know, I, I was dealing with this. And at that moment in time, I thought, you know what, let me just kind of overcome this whole issue of not opening up. Let me just tell you what's on my mind. Let me just be 100% p- with you. And then you say to me, oh, you're being a bit too sensitive or you're overthinking it. I, it won't even be an argument. I'll just say to you, okay, cool. Mm. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true. <laughs> Simple. Uh, yeah, I, cool. I see you. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, okay, cool. No worries. It's fine. I know where I stand. Um, yeah. And so I think that's why it's important to create environments where it's possible for you to be able to speak. Like even, even this podcast, for example. I will share more on this podcast than I've probably shared with some friends or with family members. Mm. And, and I guess the reason for that is one, because it's, there's an element to what you were saying earlier in that I know you guys, but I don't know you guys incredibly well. Like we mm. know each other through a mutual, which is this good man, Malik. Yeah. Malik. So it's one of the things where it's like, I'm open to say stuff, but I also know that there's not, there isn't that much fear of judgment Mm. yeah yeah it's I also that. a cathartic release where we're able to come and just let go and share and speak mm. and have we've all had shared experiences and yeah. it's very difficult to to get four or five free people in a room mm -hmm. and it's like you know what i get that and i've been through that and i've experienced that because when you introduced the topic and you said about opening up you were silent yeah <laughs> it's like whoo yeah. But that shows that we're <laughs> all about to be a big one. Yeah, <laughs> but we're all on the same page. And yeah, my my sort of memory went back to times where I've I've went to open up or I've tried to open up or yeah. I've struggled with it. And I'm I'm guessing that's sort of where everybody's mind went to. And like you said, we don't know each other, but we've had similar experiences with this same topic. Mm. Yeah. Um Okay, so wait, let's let's hear the question again, please. So in the sense of I just, when, I you, when I did it, you laughed. No, you, that was right at the beginning of the session, bro. Yeah, yeah, no excuse. That was right at the beginning of the session. But I just want to refresh my mind, you know. Just, just updates. <laughs> yeah. Nah, um, so in the sense of, it, would you say it's easy or difficult for you to open up about things? Okay, for me, I know it's very dif difficult to open up about things, um, and I think as we've done like more and more episodes um, on these type of um subjects or whatever i find that um i've basically just had trust issues from a young age um i've never really felt like i've had anyone close enough to me to share my thoughts and feelings and at times when i might have i've been made to feel small or yeah. my feelings have been made to sound like i'm emotional when i was young i heard that a lot you're very emotional you need to calm down you know, all that type of stuff. And hearing it so many times as a child, um, I guess it, it made me suppress my feelings a lot. And it does have an effect on your on your attitude towards things of, you know, vulnerability, mm. healthy communication mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, mm. and, I, and I completely get it from your point of view where you're saying it's like a case of stuff that you've had potentially from childhood mm. still ends up playing an effect. Mm. And again kind of talking to what you spoke about earlier about the whole concept of therapy regarding these things um therapy i can't speak it amongst a lot of um other individuals but i know for the most part not to generalize but amongst black men and amongst a lot of their circles the whole topic of therapy is basically oh, if you're going to therapy basically Tapped uh, you're them. tapped fam <laughs> fam you got fam, fam, you got some deep seated issues and and the funny thing is is that I feel like it's that whole thing of you either go into therapy because you've either they feel if you, unless it's a case of you've been sectioned you don't need therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that, so interesting. But you, but you know what? You say that, then I think about how my parents and possibly their parents have viewed therapy and you know um, anything mental health related as yeah. You're a witch. You're a demon. You need to go to church. You need to go pray. You need to, you need deliverance. everything. Everything never, is the devil. It's never a thing that can be um, spoken about. Um, or discussed in a manner whereby you try yeah. and break it down. Yeah, it always feels like you're going to be judged if you mention anything. Like even depression, mm. I could never talk to my parents about depression. If I ever said that, they'll say, "Oh, what age are you that you're depressed? You don't know anything about depression." Mm. And you that's feel it. Like we do that as well, though. When when someone s tells us that they're sort of going through something, where we're dismissive without re realizing that we're being dismissive. No, nah, yeah. you I know what? I'm I'm not. I don't think we are in comparison. Mm. To no, to do you know? Parents. I get where T's coming from. It may not be as bad as the way our parents say, where it's like, oh, what are you complaining about? But I do get where you're coming from, where you'd be like, oh, I'm a bit depressed. Oh, no, you're all right, man. Mm -hmm. That in itself mm -hmm. is dismissive. Especially I get, when I get, you're... Do you, I get do you guys actually hear, let's say your boys, for example, do you actually hear your boys say those lines? Eh? What lines? I, I, I haven't heard 
I don't think I've heard any of my boys say like even, even as like a just as a passing comment. Eh? No, no. My, my, bo- my boys have told that. me. I feel like me and my like especially my uni friends because we went through so much. Like in uni, like going through three years of uni, that shit like that was depressing, mm. and a lot of friends went broke. A lot of friends mm. lost their parents, family members, or whatever, and we had to console each other. And you know, whenever someone was feeling down or to this or to the extent of being depressed, I felt like be- oh, because I had been through a lot of stuff myself, mm. I was able to um, um, empathize with the friend you know i wouldn't dismiss their feelings because i know how it feels to be have my feelings di- dismissed yeah. and i know what it feels like to mm. have so and so happen and you know it's it can be be a very dark place and all you want is to know that you've got people by your side mm. not just yeah. feeling alone lo- feeling alone mm. i thought he was gonna say something bro you s- no i was not in the <laughs> green movie you know <laughs> no. Like, yes, yes. yes no i said i'm i'm feeling it i'm feeling it no um i think as i get older i I learned that um, communication is key, and especially being in a relationship as well. <laughs> if there's no communication, there's no foundation, and it's literally just a ticking time bomb. There's, if it's not one thing, it'll be another. Um, yeah, being in a relationship has taught me a lot. Mm. Like you can't just think things through by yourself. You're in a partnership. Mm. You're in a team. You know, if you think one thing. If you if you have ideas in your head or you you know you want to make plans in your head, you can't just be by yourself. It's got to be um, a joint effort. Um, and like you said before, if something happens that annoys you or whatever, you can't just hold it in because mm. there's only a matter of time and it will bleed over into other thing other things and other people. Mm. It's best just to talk it there and then, get the situation handled, then you can move on. Mm. For me, I'll be honest with you, that's a lot easier said than done. It, it, oh, yeah. bro it's I was hard the same thing. especially Word. when you've lived a certain <laughs> way most of your life it's hard to then break out of it mm-hmm. it's unlearn and learn mm. all of that is is long bro yeah. it's worth it I guess in the end oh, I, it's I, worth it I remember when I tried to have a, a therapy session mm. and I couldn't open up <laughs> <laughs> you wasted your money it was so funny <laughs> we, we went in there and I sat down and she asked the questions as, yeah. as you do and she's just speaking. And in my mind, I thought, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to think I have problems. Were you wearing your shades? Yeah. No, <laughs> of course I wasn't. But um, <laughs> it got into me. But um, <laughs> no, I just, I said, I'm, I'm just not going to, I don't know you. I don't want you mm. to judge me or think I have problems. Yeah. I'm right. in this room on your sofa. Yeah. And I, we had three sessions. And I said, nah, yeah, she thinks I'm sick. Like, I'm a good person. I, mm. I patterned her. <laughs> you know what I saw? So <laughs> just a waste of everybody's time. Right? I but that's own the time mentality, time. though, but we have yeah. with, with, with opening up, where you don't want people to just see you as this guy or person with problems. Yeah. And that's seen, so interesting. You don't want to be though. seen as broken. Yeah, word. But that's also very interesting in terms of what Manny said earlier on, in terms of it's easier to open up to people that you don't know, mm-hmm. knowing that it's superficial. But then... Opening up to someone that you don't know, but is actually likely to be very well versed mm-hmm. in terms of what you're dealing with, mm. is actually just as difficult. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't, I don't really think a lot of people take that in either. But it's interesting that T said that because for me, I had therapy, I started therapy this year. Okay. And the only reason I started therapy is because my wife had said to me many, many times, you need to go to therapy. She'd identified for too long now that mm. is like there's lots of things you're dealing with from your early childhood that you're not dealing with in a healthy not manner with now, but I think ultimately it's affecting our relationship and that's not something you want to then take into uh, your marriage or even like fatherhood yeah yeah I'm a father in July and that really hit me like because that's true congrats. like some of the thank congrats you, thank you. Yeah, some of the congrats, issues bro. that I'm having to like deal with mentally they're probably some of the same things that my dad had to deal with and mm. a lot of these things are just like generational. You know, what I saw mm-hmm. is how I then normalized stuff. I normalized it, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, uh, I, I didn't see beyond what it was that I had experienced myself. And so mm. I think when I started therapy, I actually didn't mind talking to someone that I didn't know. Mm. The issue that I had was that the person that I was doing the f- my therapy session with, I didn't feel like she would understand everything that I was about to like offload, uh, uh, offload to her and it's not just a demographic thing mm. I will make the point that it wasn't it, it wasn't a black person mm. it, it was it was a it was a 
white lady. Lovely. You know, like, it was nothing to do with her on the personal point of view or to do with her character, but I know that there were things I was talking about. That culturally she wouldn't, f- she wouldn't get. Nah. And so I think that was where I had, like... A little block. You had, you had apprehension. Yeah. Because yeah. then I even started to think to myself, hmm... Like, in the middle of a session, because it was like a 45-minute session each time yeah. I did it, in the middle of the session, something hit me. I was just like, wait, if I say this thing, does this come back to me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, in terms of, like, in a, in a legal way. Like, yeah, yeah. Know, like if I say what happened when I was 16... Oh, then we will remind... They're going to remind night, you that you're... You know, that you can't get... She won't report you. Well, I, I would hope that she would do that. But that, that's that's what stopped me, ultimately, from mm. kind of sharing too much. But yeah. actually, I had the, the opposite experience from what you were saying mm. to you, where, like, I had one session with the same woman... Where in that session I broke down in tears. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, Damn. actually, let me not say I, I, I didn't break down. I was crying. Yeah, I wanted to so hide you it. Finally, as as, let go. Yeah, I wanted to hide it. I couldn't hide it because I was talking about something I haven't opened up or spoken about in maybe in about 10, 12 years. Like not too long after the incident had happened. Mm. And so for me, I was even shocked myself. I was like, "Damn, you let yourself go, man!" Like this person seen you cry. But I took comfort in the fact that it was someone that I. I didn't really know, you know, like it's some. I took comfort in the fact that beyond this meeting, I'm not going to see her. I'm not going to mm. have any contact with. So, her. in in the sense of you know what you you have you have that moment to essentially be able to vent fully, ideally potentially get some understanding, leave that session and go and go back to being just do Manny, yeah. the Manny that everyone else knows. But yeah. and and I think and and you're absolutely right because um, opening up as a whole for everyone, everyone's experience seems to be quite interesting. Mm. Um, I don't know if I've opened up properly to anyone. You want to open up now? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, space, no, 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 no. Why not? Do you know what Why it is? No, 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 no. I'm capping. I'm capping. I have opened up. And there are a select few people who I do open up to that it's a case of, you know what, come rain, come shine. I can definitely, you know what, open up to you about it. I think the key thing, though, at the same time is knowing that when you do open up about these things, do you want this person to potentially help you work through it or do you just want to vent? Because sometimes a lot of people don't know the difference between the two. Mm. Do you get it? So if you're talking about a certain thing, I'm telling you this not because I want your advice or because I want you to advise me. I just want to have someone to talk to about it and just say it exactly as it is. Mm. Do you think it's down to that person to let the recipient know that they're looking just to... Looking to just be heard, or oh no, I yeah, I, I feel I feel like the person who is venting to someone should absolutely state that either I want to vent, or you know what, I want your opinion on something. And I say this because when it comes to for me, right, if my mates open up to me about a potent a potential issue or a problem, mm. my default mode is okay. How can we fix this? Mm. That's yeah. me because th- th- that's someone, the way I'm for my people. Then if you're venting. Aren't you venting to that person for some sort of advice? Whether not necessarily. Whether you know you want it or not, aren't you? No, some, <laughs> no, not necessarily. A lot of people like to, to, to vent and they don't want to hear that. Yeah, and they don't want to hear anything. It's just it's just that case of, you know what, I can actually not keep this all in my head. I can actually mm-hmm. vocalise mm-hmm. my thoughts and feelings on this particular thing or a potential series of issues. Mm. Um And I remember that I got into a bit of passive with a couple of my mates sometimes because I'm always bit that person of, Okay, you come across you come across a situation. How do you solve it? How do we get about doing that? Mm. That was me until I think I had, I think I was talking with one of my siblings actually. I think it was my older sister, and um, I think she helped me clarify the difference between wanting to vent for the sake of venting, mm. and then venting to someone with their with the aim of getting advice. So there's this saying, right, which my mum always says to, which always said to me, uh, which is a problem shared is a problem halved. And stuff. Sometimes I just want to share my problem. I don't want to have it. Please <laughs> make I share, make I come out. Please let me just share and go. Mm. Just because, because sometimes you know what, and it's not necessarily because maybe because you don't want potential advice on it. It might just be a case of you know what. Right now, I am too mentally exhausted to a go through the explaining the whole situation about where I am or what's led me to it, and then b now trying to break and then come to a solution. That is mentally daunting for anybody. And not everyone has the mental fortitude to go through explaining a situation and then actively trying to think of ways to potentially solve it. That's not for everyone. You know what's even worse than a person that's trying to solve a problem, being impartial and common sense. When yeah. someone's like, when someone's venting, yeah. not just being 
the fixer in that situation is being the person that's trying to be impartial. That that was the problem that I had. That's yeah, you're right. It's very tough, had, especially when you know that person. Yeah, yeah. I had like friends, like more so with my partner, and she might be venting about something, and I'm listening to the whole thing and I'm analyzing it, which is just what I would do. Mm. And then my head, I'm thinking, hmm, in that situation, you probably could have done this a bit better. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, yeah. I can see where the other person's coming from. And I've learned the hard way that that's just as damn that's, that, mm. that's not, that's not, mm -mm. Because do you know what it is? If you did that for me, I would appreciate it. Because when I vent to you, I actually want you to be a voice of reason almost mm. all the time. Yeah. Because more often than not, I'm not really going to vent. So if I'm really venting, it's because I really, this is bothering what, me. Yeah. I need a second opinion on this. I need someone else to kind of tell me that I'm being irrational or I'm not being irrational. That's me. But... Yeah. When I'm, yeah, That's when someone me. else is That's talking me. to me, I'm I'm expecting to do the same thing for them. So they yeah. might be venting about something, and in my head I'm thinking, all right, cool. So, yeah, you probably might have done a bit too much there. Or this is maybe where they were coming from, and I've been told like, stop doing that. Like, if I'm telling you something, just listen. Don't take any sides. Don't be impartial. Like, just mm. just listen. And I think that for me was like when I was like, okay, cool. This whole communication thing isn't just about listening. And then giving advice yeah, or yeah, yeah. trying to be the, the 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 bigger person in that situation. Sometimes you just have just, to just have to listen. Shut your thinking mouth. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know what? That's so funny. That's something that I've clocked a lot with my lady friends as opposed to my guy friends. Mm. So when it comes to my guy friends, for example, and they tell me about a situation, I can tell them straight. Oh yeah, you know what? In this regard, you kind of fucked up. <laughs> mm. And they can take it and they can be like, oh, but how though? And then obviously you break it down, and then and then they might be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I hear it, right?" But then I feel like a big part of that is because at the end of the day, um, I feel like a lot of guys tend to have a fundamental aspect of logic in the way that they want to assess things. So it's a case of you know what? I, let me detach the emotion from this, and let's look at this from a purely Practical. logical yeah. Yeah. yeah purely from a place of principle and logic right mm -hmm. um with some of my close lady friends when they tell me about some of their issues right i wish i was talking with them and they'll be telling me some of this stuff and i'll just be like okay but you were wrong here and they'll be like why the fuck do i tell you anything and i'm just like, <laughs> like <laughs> don't do it but i don't <laughs> think that's an issue of logic maybe <laughs> perspective or a mm. clash of perspectives not necessarily logic because i've got a lot of female friends who are logical and mm. a lot more logical than i guess my f uh, male, friends. My male friends okay so I just, yeah i just think sometimes you they might tell you something from their perspective and sometimes because we've n we're not we've not lived obviously as a, a woman yeah. we're not able to see why they see it like that do you mm. get what i mean that's Whereas fair. with a guy it's like oh yeah yeah i get that i've been through something similar and whatever whatever but yeah, yeah that happens yeah. a lot of times when you're i guess you're talking with a female so she she sees it in a certain way and you're like wait huh then you yeah. have to sort of break it down to say yeah 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 and go through it yeah so I, yeah i wouldn't put that down to logic okay that's fair that's my fair. opinion obviously no 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 of course no of course i've i feel and i think as a result that's why i've done that whole thing with a lot of my friends like you know male or female in the sense of um before we start do you want advice <laughs> or do you want to vent for two reasons? That disclaimer. Yeah, word. No, no, honestly. And it saved, it saves, it, it saved me so much in so many different ways. Number one, it saves me having to talk more than I need to when I can just shut up and Lord knows I can talk. And number two, Lord knows. I'm going to slap you. I'm going to give you a dirty stinking slap if you're not careful right now. Yo. All right. Be very careful the way you talk to me. All right. In fact, Malik, take him out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, I think the sec the second one also at the same time is that sometimes, you know that that whole saying of yeah you know a problem shared is a problem halved. But I won't lie, sometimes taking on the emotional burden of some of your friends' problems, mm. oh, I can weigh you down. Yeah, you know oh. what? <laughs> you know what? Um, can weigh you down. Um, I read in the book and it was saying, um, I think it was the Forty Eight Laws of Power, and it was saying, um, stay away from the miserable people because oh, yeah, bad energy. Yeah, yeah. Bad energy cause you will take on whatever Bad they're going for, well. like yeah, yeah it will rub off baggage. on you yeah without even knowing you're listening to all these negative negative things and you know you're trying to you're, you're worrying about stuff that's outside of you mm. you carry it on and that can fuck up your energy and your vibe and your progress and 
Uh, it's, yeah. su- it's such it's a like selfish way of thinking, though. When when you deep it, it's like yeah. It's I was gonna <laughs> say there's, 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 there's something about finding a balance between that. Cause yeah. Cause yes. Because many people will say that, like, oh, like I'm gonna cut off anyone that's got like too much, you know, bad vibes, too much bad energy, mm. too many complaints. You know why like, I find that? Those people yeah. are your friends. I'm yeah. pretty sure if something was to happen to them, everyone's gonna be screaming, oh, like the mental health of other people. Mm. Yeah. Check mm. out on your friends. Yeah. You gotta be selective. You gotta be, you know, it, like you said, there's gotta be balance. Um. I wouldn't just, you know, be. Mm. Okay, I, 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 I want to say truth in that this though. is a dilemma of wording because I, I can yes, see, I, I, can, I can see that <laughs> battle on his face. Like, how am I gonna wed this without coming across as a? Dick? Okay, so for me, yeah, it's about self-preservation. You want to make sure that your mental health is intact, but you, if anyone needs help and they come to you, you want to be able to help them. Yeah. My thing is be selective in who you help. Because not everyone that is seeking help actually wants help. Some people love drama. Some people love yep. chaos. Yep, that's so like they're driven. That they, the um, whole world is just around. Yeah, a story to tell you. Bro, about. there's yeah. always a story. There's always a situation. They love that. So when you're dealing with these people, just know that your input might not might not help the situation at all. So yeah, listen. But for me, I'd avoid. Uh, I'd avoid these type of people. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is clever. I think that's not so much. I don't think being selfish. I think it's just like you said, managing other people's expectations, but also mm. kind of managing being it. Yeah, and also being mindful of your own, of your own, yeah. mindful of your own expectations in a sense of there's only so much um, that I could potentially take on um, in terms of other people's. Like the saying goes, <laughs> my, my brother says it to me. He says, "You can't be taking um, Panadol for someone else's headache." <laughs> Real, nah, realist That's of so real. Nigerian. No, nah, it's so Panadol. Nigerian, but it's so true. You can't be taking Panadol for someone else's headache. Mm. Like, there's only so much advice and perspective, you know, and wisdom that you can potentially offer and so on and so forth. Because mm. um, at the end of the day, you've got your own stuff, like to get through. You've exactly, got your own things going on. Your universe is different from their universe. Exactly. You, like, you're, you're listening to the stuff they're going through, but in your own world. It's chaos, and you're tr- still trying to figure out how you're gonna get through the next day. Mm. Mm. I guess that's why it's it's, uh, it's about working together. Mm. Um, yeah, because I used to have this thing with uh, a couple of my closest friends where we would do a prayer circle, mm. and we would meet up once a week or once every two weeks to just get together and pray. And I remember like the first couple of sessions, we're just yeah, God look after us, and no one's opening up, but you don't realize it. We're just meeting up together to sort of pray together. Mm. And as the weeks got on and we got more comfortable and we got more vulnerable, and these are friends probably 10 years plus maybe. Yeah. So we're close, but we're struggling to open up to, with each other. Yeah. Then before you know it, you feel comfortable and it's God this and I'm going through this and I need help with this. And we're opening up and we're all being there for each other. And it's not necessarily that you're intentionally coming to this space with bad energy you're coming with everything that you've been through. Like, yeah. This mm. week I might have lost a job or this week there was an argument or I'm worried or I'm panicking and stuff like that or I'm stressed about this. And it is, you're, it's, 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 a, it's a dark moment or a dark space where you're just letting off. But when you leave, it's that baggage and that burden mm. is no longer you there. You feel so relieved, yeah. You've not only prayed with friends, but you've actually been so transparent and no one's given advice because we're taking this and we're giving it to God. Mm-hmm. But you're not venting, you're just opening up. And that's probably my only experience where I've had it with multiple of my friends. But it's odd because after, like let's say on a normal day where you're talking, no one's opening up. No. But when you come to that space, it's like, boom, yeah, this was it. And I think that's what it's all about. Just having that, you have to have bad energy in order or to, you have to, allow it to be expressed in order to solve it. Mm. If that makes sense. If you don't, then you just suppress it and it's, oh yeah, you know what? Positive vibes, mm. good yeah. vibes. And you're never actually dealing with anything that you're, that's anything bad because everything's supposed to be good. Yeah. And just to add on to that, what ends up happening is when it's not expressed or it's not potentially vented, what ends up happening is that it ends up manifesting itself mm. in other negative or toxic traits. Mm. And that is actually potentially much worse because it's a case of you're not communicating effectively. You struggle to open up. You choose to keep everything bottled in. It's like that whole saying of, you know, eventually enough pressure will burst whereby there's a defining moment 
or there's a series of moments that essentially lead to you um, flipping out or know. potentially, yeah, or potentially breaking out or, or it being a case of something major or minor ends up manifesting in perhaps different aspects of your life. So for, mm. for, so for, so for example, maybe it's a case of if you're, if you're someone who um, has struggled to perhaps maybe open to abuse, for example, right? Perhaps it's a case of you've been, you know, abused as a child, like, you know, domestic violence and stuff. You know, growing up in an abusive household, you don't speak about those things. What then ends up happening? You then manage that by by it manifesting in other aspects of your personality. So you have potentially have anger issues, right? Um, and so on and so forth. Or you have a, a, a way of behaving towards, uh, a way of behaving towards maybe sex yeah a particular sex because maybe that's you know maybe it was a, yep. a mother or father at home that had yep. abused you and then you have a, a complex around women and how you start to treat them or yep. men and vice versa yeah yep. i agree it definitely comes out i was going to say something that you said to i'm glad you mentioned prayer because although i str- i struggle to open up um generally speaking prayer has actually been one of the things that's helped me in the last, like, I'd say four or five years. Um, I don't think it's the only way that I should be opening up, um, recognizing mm. that I should do so with my friends, with my family, with my wife. But definitely prayer has, because when when, when there aren't opportunities to meet up with my friends, even though technically they should always be, it's just whatever you prioritize, but mm-hmm. me and my mates aren't that great at actually meeting up. Mm. Talk, talking through WhatsApp every single day isn't the same as meeting up, like oh. you said. Mm. Preaching. Yeah. 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 Shots yeah. fired. And, and, uh, <laughs> it's not the same, Facts. but we all do Facts. it. Like, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just as like culpable in that sense, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so, so when when I don't have those opportunities to meet up with my mates once a week, sometimes not even for a few months, but we're talking every day on WhatsApp. Being able to pray for me is 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 one way that I can actually offload some of the things that are on my mind and I, and I take that quite seriously because I, I, I have understood that when I've got lots of worries and lots of anxieties uh, you know one thing that I can do is to pray it out and by praying that's literally me talking to God so that's whether I'm in the shower mm. whether it's me in the car or my yeah. way to work just talking and I think there's something powerful in that because mm-hmm. once upon a time I might have thought that that was quite stupid <laughs> yeah because you've got a you've, you have a perspective Oh, so you have a perception on what prayer should look like, which is the yelling and the shouting at 12 midnight that I've seen growing up. Mm. But no one actually tells you that, you know, praying is also having oh, a Zana. <laughs> Oh, Zana. Oh, yeah. Zana. <laughs> but no one, no one talks about the fact that actually prayer is talking with God. Um, and yeah. there is, and there's, mm. there's, yeah. no, there's no structure around that. It's meant to be as informal, as regular, as consistent as you make it. Do you know what? Be. On that particular topic, that's a big thing, right? In the sense of just realizing that it's not about, obviously, at the end of the day, you know, depending, of course, on your faith, you absolutely acknowledge that, you know, as you know, as your creator and so on and so forth. And actually, there's always going to be a certain level of reverence. But also, at the same time, it's not so much the point whereby you can't just have a conversation and just try and gain understanding. And even, again, depending on what you read, depending on what, you know, religion you follow, whether it be Christianity, Islam, uh, Judaism, whatever the case may be, whatever the religion may be, one of the key things that you actually come to realize with a lot of these, um, key figures in the bible is that yes when it came to doing you know you know so for example with um king david for example you know very very big on praise and worship for example but at the same time when it came to him praying with god it was so personal Mm -hmm. as well so um on that religious aspect yeah that's definitely a thing um what i was gonna ask um which i guess because we kind of got into it was um have there been any defining factors that has caused you a to struggle to open up or b been able to reverse that in the sense of now you can open up a lot more as a result i think you kind of touched briefly on it in terms of you know you doing you know undergoing therapy um obviously you praying with your friends obviously t you mentioned obviously you know a prayer circle and obviously you know you, you again um the major obviously spoke about you know your friends in terms of uni and so on and so forth yeah. and all these other things um where they're obviously without having to get too personal because again it's purely subjective based on how comfortable you are in terms of talking about it. in terms of a defining period in your life that made you think or rather that it was such a profound moment in your life that made you think I'm never opening up to anybody again. 
Right. I think there's been multiple of those, you know, like you touched on earlier. Yeah. Parents, one, like you said, relationships. You could have a relationship where that person that is, I guess you're always listening to, as soon as you now want to open up, is you're being too sensitive or man up or whatever it is, and they're yeah. not listening to you. So I think it's just this, and it's just an amalgam of just different experiences. Mm. I don't think it's just one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> Would everyone I, I be can, in agreement I can, on that? I can think of, um, so one of my early um, experiences or earlier moments in my life, I, th I remember I was in secondary school and we had a singing class. And before, before this moment, I was fairly confident. I didn't have any problems putting myself out there. You know, I'd be the first to put my hand up and, you know, try something new. So, um <coughs> It was singing, singing class, and our class were performing a song, and we needed two people to perform a solo. A solo, right? You it. No, no. So one person. Each. One person each. Oh yeah, yeah solo, doing, solo, yes, doing yeah. a solo. So um, the the female part was sorted, and we was now looking for a guy, but none of the guys put their hands up. So I jumped up, put my hand up, and I said I was down. So um, yeah, I I stood in the middle of the class. The track played, I started singing. Then the people who met to me were boys, they started laughing. And that moment, it completely broke me. I, I ran out of class and I just sat down crying. And I said, from that point on, I'm never ever putting myself um, up for anything again. And mm. looking looking back, it, 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 it bled onto other things as well. So like we spoke in the other episode, yeah. when it came to presentations in school and anything where I had to speak in front of people, I would cry, I would break down, I'd completely, I, it'd block me. Um, and it was, it wasn't, it was only until I started going to drama school. This is, so this is the moment where I realized I could start opening up to people and kind of um, removing those blockages. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the early sessions, we, we gathered as a group and we spoke about moments in our lives where we felt our confidence was um, affected, you know, our ability to communicate with people. And I explained the situation and, you know, I felt like every, everyone was listening, you know, as I was telling my story, I was looking around and everyone was looking at me, which felt, it felt like, I knew I was in a safe space. Um, and even telling the story, I cried because, not because I was angry or sad, but, it was the first time explaining it to a group of people and knowing that there's no need to be ashamed of it. Cause I felt ashamed of it for so long. It's embarrassing. You know, you're singing in front of people and like singing itself is very, very personal. You know, just like acting is very personal. It's a part of you. It's not like you're being someone else. It's your, you're presenting yourself and to have that laugh that, um, it's, it's not easy and it's not easy. It's not easy to cope with. And yeah, it's something that I'm still getting over now, but through drama school and just accepting that um, it's not on me, it's on the kids at the time. Mm. Kids can be very horrible. You know, kids say stuff that they don't really know how detrimental it can be further down the line. Mm. So I'm thinking of that. Like you, do, yeah. you like, I'm, I'm like, I've been there myself, you know, laughing at people and stuff. You don't realize how it can affect someone further down the line. Um, and it, it massively affected my self-confidence and my um, ability to even just be open about the way I feel to people. I felt like I just, I just didn't need to. I'd keep everything to myself. Mm -hmm. If anything bothered me, I'd keep it to myself. I wouldn't put myself in a position where my I could be judged pretty much. Mm -hmm. And your confidence would be locked. Yeah. Yeah. Ask, yeah. I, had, I had one particular moment in my life that I think... Um, it really, uh, it really affected me, um, not just in that moment, but I think up until the point where I realized actually it's all right to be able to speak about this. So when I was 17, uh, my best friend passed away in a car accident. Sorry to hear, bro. Sorry, man. Cool. And so he passed away with two of my other school friends. They passed away in a car accident. Damn. Damn. Two of my other friends survived the car accident and they just so happened to be brothers. And so like, I really, really struggled with that. I really, really struggled with that. So I'm just gonna have to take my breath for a sec. Mm. 
So, so what was happening was, like, two weeks after they had passed, I was getting these nightmares or dreams, however you want to look at it. And in that, in in those dreams, I was seeing my f- my best friend in the in those dreams all the time. You know, it, it at some point it wasn't comforting anymore because it was almost like I'm seeing someone that I'm not going to, going to see mm-hmm. in person mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. So I really really struggled with that. And uh, long story pretty short, I was emotionally just it was I was a wreck. This was. This was a. Uh, this happened in the summer just before I was about to start my second year of college. Mm. So and it impacted that year as well quite significantly. And I remember I was just crying constantly at home, crying constantly. The only, the only bit of peace that I got was that it it brought all of my school friends back together again, in that we would meet regularly, like we would meet almost every night after they passed for like weeks. Mm-hmm. It did become unhealthy eventually because. Uh, people were then using it as an excuse to then say, you know, we're going to start drinking or we're going to start bunning yeah, on yeah. behalf of Coping the person that had passed. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and I didn't really like that because my friend wouldn't have wanted us to come here and then say we're doing that in his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In his name, sorry. So, you know, one, 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 one day in particular, someone in my family, a member of my family, came into my room and, and said, like, what's the matter? Like, you know, like, what was going on? And I was clearly like, true i was still crying this might have been a a few weeks after it happened and i said to him i was like listen i'm still i'm still struggling like i'm just so sad i'm so depressed like i can't stop crying and Mm. their reaction was this happened two weeks ago people die you need to get over it like if it's that bad why don't you go and meet them that that was the response yeah and so (coughs) in that moment and, and prior to that moment i wasn't I wasn't close at all with this member of my family. As in, we did yeah. not have a good relationship. At that point, me. that person is definitely an op. So, <laughs> when I heard that, I couldn't be angry because it wasn't like, you know, we were talking about trust. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I wasn't trusting him necessarily, like, with, with like, some very deep information. Anyway. I was just saying it. Like, mm. but his reaction at that moment in time, it... That floor someone. Yeah, you know, it you floors yeah. someone. It's hard to explain because because I wasn't close with him. It wasn't like I was like, oh, you've just broken my heart. But it at was the same, like, yeah, yeah. It's disappointment, you know, it never just, to yeah, do it was again. a level of disappointment yeah. I can't ever explain. And so yeah. what, what it did is it caused me to never speak about that situation in public or mm. with anybody mm. in that same detail ever, not ever again, but like for a very, very, very long, long time. time. Yeah. You know, it led to me putting tattoos on my body because that was my way of dealing with the grief of that meeting with my boys every single day it wasn't like we was having in-depth conversations that was maybe therapeutic for any of us a lot of toxic things were happening in those moments so it's not even like even when we were together we were really opening up about and something. actually supporting each other just through the situation no, yeah toxic. Like, just, it was just a toxic yeah. environment and, it, and there was some good that come out from it in terms of us being together yeah and there's many people i don't think i'd be as close with now if it wasn't for the fact that when they had passed, it brought lots of people oh, together. Back together yeah. But in terms of the opening up aspect of it, I couldn't talk about it. Mm. And so what happened was when I did start talking about it in small doses with my partner, every time I was about to talk about it, I'd choke up. Mm. And because I could feel the emotion bubbling up inside of me, I'd stop. Mm. I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd well up every single time. And I always felt that the only reason why... I f- I the thing is with death, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to talk about because nobody ever gets over someone passing that's close to them. Mm. Yeah, but I feel like you're able to manage it better if you're in an environment that allows you to just grieve how you need to grieve, mm-hmm. if you're supported in that. You know, there's different things that can allow someone to maybe uh, move on in a positive way mm. after they've lost someone. But I didn't have that. So mm. every time I spoke about that particular moment, which is quite a traumatic thing because it wasn't just one friend. I lost three friends in one accident and one friend never learned to speak or talk again. <sighs> I never wanted to talk about it in public without welling up. And that, that, was, that, was what, that was the damage that that one moment did for me. I think mm. the only way I was able to come out of that a little bit, and it's still a very difficult thing to talk about in great detail. And, you know, I mentioned earlier about me, like, uh, breaking down in a therapy session. It was mm. that. That's what oh, I spoke oh, about. Right. Mm. I yeah. hadn't spoken. And, and it was easier to talk about it then because it was someone that 
I wasn't emotionally attached to in any way. And I guess I kind of recognized that she was a professional and she might be able to do some bits mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. But ultimately, I was able to just let it out. But even to talk about it with my wife, because if I was to talk about it with my wife, what I didn't want is for her to put her arm around me or to like console me because yeah. I felt even more vulnerable <coughs> and I didn't want to be vulnerable. And that's part of the reason why I don't like to open up because yeah. being vulnerable. You don't want to be, you, you don't want f- to, you don't want to feel pitied. To. Yeah, I don't want to feel yeah. it. And, and, and you know what? Yeah. When, it's, when it's all said and done, why don't I? Because actually, there's nothing wrong in getting comfort. There's nothing wrong in being told it's going to be a right or being hugged or just weeping or crying. Mm. But because I hadn't seen it, and it's not something that was promoted in my life, yeah, I had always, I had always seen it as a bad thing. You know? Yeah, because, you fund, because yeah. to a degree, you fundamentally see it as a sign of... Because th- uh, with a lot of guys, guys tend to do this whole thing, which I think especially growing up now and being the age I'm at, it's complete like bullshit. This whole thing of vulnerability therefore equals weakness. Mm -hmm. And it is something that absolutely, especially amongst like, especially in the male psyche, it has to be eliminated because when it comes to situations like that, if you cannot break down effectively, right, about certain things, because here's the thing, that saying of no is it is it no man is an island or mm-hmm. something like that and that whole thing of a problem shared is a problem halved is a lot more um important than a lot of people take in i remember one of my guys who i'm still pretty close with now i remember i went through um i went through an insane breakup um and i remember how i broke down like a dickhead. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It was hard. Listen, listen, shout out to K in it. That, that's what I'm going to say. Shout out to K. Because he, uh, listen, I remember, I remember when I went through that breakup and the way I was, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd ever barred out so hard in a very long time. And this guy was on the phone to me the entire time, like just there supporting me. I think, I don't even think that, I don't think I'd ever even smoke cigarettes that day. I definitely went through that heart like a 10 pack. <laughs> Bro, if you would have thought, listen, you know that, you know that thing of, you know that thing of um, Ian Bill. Like, I ain't got nothing yeah, left. Yeah. <laughs> that was me, cause ah, ah, suffering. But um, but as a result of that, like um, <laughs> being able to open up about those things, especially with your boys as well, it's something that isn't spoken about enough. Yeah, we all have this whole thing of oh yeah, big man, tough red, and then the whole speaking of that whole thing, or like me and T were talking about earlier, and the whole thing of oh you'll be alright, man. Nah. Or just, or, or just talk about everything that's positive. Everything that's positive. Like, like, you, you don't know. But have no idea. And you know what? I'm guilty of this. People ask you, oh, what's good, bro? Yeah, everything's blessed. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No. I, I, I've been thinking of that from the beginning of the question. It's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> simple. What are you saying? You're good? Yes, brother. Woo, what about you? Everything's yes. blessed. Yes. <laughs> We're both just there. Yeah, you're good. good. I'm trying to be like you. Yeah, but the thing is with that, yeah, if someone, if every time someone asks you, oh, what's going on? And you say, what's good? If you have to go into what is actually not good that in self that itself is draining of course it's madness if you say hello because for us what's good is hello yeah <laughs> so if someone actually said hello you know what i'm going through some shit it's Sorry. like whoa 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 what the <laughs> fuck it's, like it's what what's the hell's good? going on here that's it so we're literally just yeah. saying what's good as a as yeah a yeah no nah, no nah, of but course yeah we're products of patriarchy and like you said it's all about unlearning toxic masculinity hyper masculinity yes. yes. and just stuff that we've been brought up in and and this conversation has just been opening, um, no yeah. pun intended. Da, da, da. But um, <laughs> so you know, I want to just challenge myself this week to see how it is to just open up, open up with someone. Might say, "Yo, how's everything?" And I might just be honest. Yeah, yeah. I might. Uh, <laughs> as you start talking, I'm like, operative word. As you start talking, word is might. No, no. As you start talking, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I don't open up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. But the but thing is, at the end of the day, it all comes down to communication. You work yep. in communication, then you can open up. You know, it, it all. I feel like it comes word, down word, to word, word, comprehension. Because you know I can what? communicate, but it's whether I can make you understand and you actually understand. <laughs> I'll say th- I'll, I'll say this because I feel I feel like it's like a it's like a train of thought, right? Communication. Effective communication is important. Mm. Being able to not listen to respond, but listening to comprehend Mm. is also very, very important because only Mm -hmm. when you listen to comprehend can you actually really take in what's being said, look from it, look at it from perspective of, okay, you know what, this is is out of me, this is from this person who I know, 
how could this potentially be done? And then as a result, the opening up process is a lot easier. But if you can't communicate effectively, and if you're the type of person that listens to respond, as opposed to comprehending, forget about it. It, 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 won't, it won't be good. But my peoples, we have now come to the end of this episode. Love to everybody for listening today. Um, we're glad that we've been able to, you know, we hope we've been able to drop some good gems in terms of what it is to open up. And, you know, if, of course, you know, it's a case whereby, you know, you can't, for example, then I hope potentially that this kind, this episode gives you a bit of insight into ideally the processes of being able to break down the barriers that surround one being able to open up. Um, once again, we are always uh, looking to look after our Goodman customers. And um, what we're definitely going to be doing is um, offering GPOD 1, which is essentially a discount code for anyone, of course, that is looking uh, to embrace our products, which you absolutely should do. Because again, you know, you see the beard, you know the vibes. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. It's a fresh, fresh one. Um, but also at the same time, another thing that we are looking to ideally do is because you know what, we're always, you know, thinking of certain topics you know that we like to discuss but please if of course you know you there is any potential topic that you do want to discuss please do not hesitate to at um, any of the uh, Goodman Factory members better yet feel free to um, at Goodman Factory um, ask your question and use the hashtag ask the Goodman we will definitely do what we can to be able to discuss it and address it in one of our episodes and who knows you know what if you bring up the question maybe we'll bring you on talk your talk <laughs> thanks a lot guys if it gets to that yeah on them ones yeah, yeah absolutely but listen thanks so much continue listening